Welcome everybody to Passwordless, a story of risk protection and excellent UX by Kelsey Van Huster. We are glad Kelsey can join us today. So without further delay, over to you, Kelsey. Wonderful, thank you very much. And thank you for coming everybody. I'm, I'm delighted to, uh, to see you here and it's a privilege to be able to present this afternoon. Um, I'll share my screen if I can work the technology. Okay, so yes, just so you know, it actually doesn't matter how many times I, uh, I present at conferences and prevent, present, um, particularly this session, which I've presented a couple of times this year, I'm still nervous. Um, I will admit that right up front. Anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to talk today about the security holy grail, a way to reduce risk, protect high value accounts, and deliver an excellent user experience. It's pretty rare you get all three of those in one go. And to provide you with some context um, about my role, I work with ThoughtWorks. Um, I am the product owner for global identity at ThoughtWorks. My role is primarily internally facing and I lead a remote first globally distributed team. Um, quite a few of my team members are in India, maybe some of them are here today. Um, and we follow the sun basically to deliver identity and access management services to about 10,000 or so thought workers across the globe these days. That's me. Okay, so this is how I hope it's gonna go. First of all, I'm gonna talk briefly about passwords in general, why they're awful, and then I'm going to talk more broadly about passwordless modern authentication and how it promises a much, much better alternative. And then finally, I'm going to share with you um, our experience, our experiment at ThoughtWorks with passwordless, what worked, what didn't work so well, and share some of what um, my customers, so other thought workers, thought about the experience. So let's start with passwords. And before we do, here's a little reminder about the joy of passwords. So yeah, what fun it is. So research from October 2020 reveals that the average individual has more than 100 individual passwords to remember. I wish I had only 100. That number is only growing and that is unmanageable. In an ideal world, every single one of those are unique. 
but we know that that is not true. And the bad folks know that it's not true as well. People just want to get things done. So they're always going to take the path of least resistance. And often that means using the same password for multiple logins or developing a probably predictable pattern for their passwords. And people also share passwords. Hello, Netflix. So I'm an IT administrator. How can I stop you reusing your Pinterest password for work? Obviously, I care about security and I care a lot about the security and the corporate assets that I'm responsible for. And I would really, really like you not to use your password that you have used for your social media, favorite social media or shopping site, et cetera, for work. So I'm gonna insist that your corporate credentials have some rules around them, probably just like your employer. I'm gonna set a minimum length, I'm going to require that you include some uppercase characters, some lowercase characters, maybe an alphanumeric character as well, maybe a special character. Oh, yeah. And I'm also going to make you change it for something completely different every 90 days or so. So I've just made your life hard and I've probably annoyed you too. Despite all of that, Databases are dumb, people are smart, and my password, one, two, three, probably meets the requirements. Also, nothing stops you from using this new secure password in multiple places, writing it on a sticky note, sticking it on your desk, or sharing it with your housemates so they can watch Netflix too. And I'm not even going to discuss how the bad folks respond to these kinds of rules, other than to say that they're really not worried about them at all. So what about password managers? Well, at ThoughtWorks, one of the benefits we provide to every thought worker is a family subscription to a really well-known password manager product, as well as access to a corporate password manager so that they can manage their work-related credentials. Uptake of the benefit is very, very good. Most people um, avail themselves of it, but still not everybody. Sadly, the people who are least likely to champion the use of the product are the users that we have for whom technology is not a speciality. These people have a different speciality. They're finance specialists, they're HR specialists, they're non-technical leaders and arguably these are often the people with access to the most critical data and they're really busy they have the least amount of time and attention to take care of this stuff and on a personal note I don't know if you've ever tried to teach someone to use a password manager from absolute scratch particularly someone whose expertise is in something other than tech I have, and it's really not easy. In fact, it's really very easy to get yourself into a mess. And some people legitimately do have concerns about the security of having all their credentials stored in a single password manager or about losing access to their passwords. So a password manager is great, but it's not a silver bullet. And a weak, easily guessed password stored in a password manager is still a weak and easily guessed password. So let's talk about the best password of all. No password. So what is passwordless? Much like it says on the tin. It's a way to access a system without using a memorized password. Passwordless uses a public private cryptographic, that's a hard word to say, key pair. The public key is registered with the authenticating service, in our case, your identity provider, your IDP. And the private key is either kept on the user's device 
or is a, a hardware token. The really nice thing about passwordless is when you're talking to your customers or your users, words like cryptographic key pair and authenticating service, which makes folks' eyes glaze over, are actually really transparent to the end user. They don't need to know about any of this stuff. They just need to know how easy it is to, to use. Here's a little diagram because in a previous life, I was a business analyst, so flowcharts are, are a thing, um, about how it works. So the first step, the user provides some kind of identifier, a username or an email. And then the system prompts you for some kind of pre-registered identifier, that's a security key, or often um, we're very much a Mac shop, so very much the touch ID on your Mac um, is acceptable. The system then evaluates behavior and goes, okay, here's Kelsey, is she logging in from Melbourne like she always does on the device that she always does? If the answer is yes, signs me straight in. If the answer is no, and in a non-COVID world, I've traveled to the US or the UK or even India to see my team, then I'm considered no risk, low risk or not low risk. And the system will then challenge me for a second factor. That could be something like, in our case, a verification app. Um, and we support quite a number of those. Provided my second fact, my other factor is also valid, my identity is then verified and my access is provided. If I can't provide this additional step up, then access is denied. But generally speaking, for most end users, the process is seamless. It's fast, it feels like magic. And for systems admins and infosec teams, it means that you've now got really strong, adaptive, intelligent authentication, better peace of mind and heaps less failure demand because if people don't have passwords, you don't have to do password resets. It also gets you a fair few steps forward towards operating in a zero trust environment, but that's a whole other talk for another day. Lots of people say to me, passwordless is just like MFA. Oh, I'm just logging in with MFA. And MFA is important. You should turn it on wherever it's available. But like passwordless, it has weaknesses. Lots and lots of systems only offer MFA via SMS, which is very insecure in itself. There are many places in the world where stealing someone's phone number is pretty trivial. And certain types of MFA are vulnerable to man in the middle attacks, depending on what network you're working with. And experience as an admin tells me that phones are lost and stolen all the time. And people still don't secure their mobile phones with passwords or biometrics, or they use weak passcodes like 0000. And then there are further challenges. People travel, they don't have access to their mobile number, they drop their phone in the sink, for example. Um, lots of things can go wrong. But passwordless is actually much because of the way that it uses the key pair is a step up from MFA. So for an organization, what are the benefits of passwordless? If you want to introduce this to your organization, there are some pluses. There's significantly reduced failure demand from lost or forgotten passwords. You don't need to write password policies around length or complexity or cycle time. I don't know how many hours of my life I'll never get back writing policies. Um, it makes the onboarding process for new employees quick and simple and super easy and this is the one i love the most as a systems admin it completely prevents credential sharing can't share my netflix password with my housemates anymore 
So adopting passwordless actually means that from the corporate perspective, there's a whole lot of things that you actually don't need to do anymore. And you have complete confidence that authentication is really strong and credentials are not being shared. And what are the benefits for end users? Not much to say here, better security and a much, much, much better end user experience. So there's a catch. There's always a catch, right? There is an adoption curve for internal IT and for end users. Potentially there can be costs, but not necessarily. As I mentioned earlier, we primarily provide Macs to our employees. Those Macs have a touch bar and you can use the Touch ID as a web, web end authenticator. So we used what we had. There was no cost for us. Um, potential for a single point of failure, depending on your implementation, if you choose to issue YubiKeys or some other form of security key, there might be some management overhead there. And of course, moving to passwordless is a change and will probably require some conversations, not least with your information security team. And just to start with, there could be costs. Um, telling a busy, non-tech focused end user that you wanna completely change the way they access your systems may not be met with great enthusiasm. So yeah, there are always issues. But not many. So we tried it. And this is what happened. Bit of context. We're a consultancy. We work with clients solving their most difficult technical problems. Most of our employees don't work from our offices. We have very little corporate on-premise infrastructure. That's not true in every region, but in most regions, there's very little. Um, we do not have an internal network or local file shares. We don't have rows of PCs sitting on desks attached to the network. That's not a thing. All of our internal applications are SaaS based, including our um, IDP. And we do things a little bit differently. We work very hard to make sure that corporate IT does not get in the way. We do manage our IT assets, but with a pretty light touch. We are not, our mission is to be not creepy. Um, we do support BYOD for primary, non-primary devices. So yeah, you can BYOD your phone or your tablet. Um, and we don't and didn't want to adopt the overhead of issuing and managing security keys or hardware tokens. So initially, when we were first looking at passwordless, it looked like it might be quite hard for us to do because it was dependent on a heap of things that we just didn't have. But then a couple of years ago, there was a, an absolute game, change, game changer or two actually. Um, broad support for FIDO2 and web Authen. And for the technical people among you, FIDO2 is a set of standards that specify how users can securely authenticate to internet, device, internet services without relying on a password. And web Authen is the WC3 standard for authenticating devices, so hardware, or biometric tokens. Web, what, how it works is WebAuthn enables online services to use FIDO authentication through some kind, through a standard web API that can be built into browsers and related web platform infrastructure. For us, this was magic because it meant, as I mentioned, every single laptop that we issued had some kind of biometric 
identifier built in. Touch ID, face ID, now has, they now have a built-in web authent ident authenticator. The problem of issuing physical security keys to people went away. We didn't need to. And secondly, our IDP released some functionality that allowed us to generate adaptable sign-on policies supporting credential chaining. Um, and that's the process that I talked about earlier, where if I'm my behavior indicates a non-low risk login, our IDP will step up the security and ask me for another credential in the chain. So those two things made a huge difference for us. Um, adaptable sign-in sign policies here have been particularly important. Um, because they mean that we can look at user behavior and make judgments about whether that user behavior is unusual or whether it's within a set of normal ranges. We can also set up different policies for different groups of users, um, depending on risk, for example. So how did we do it? Well, we applied hypothesis driven design and as systems admins we spend a lot of time verifying people's identity and resetting passwords to set a user's part reset a user's password requires on average four to five back and forth interactions between it support and end users it's slow it's painful and on top of all the problems that we've already talked about in regard to passwords, it's a lot of failure demand. So our hypothesis was basically focused on reducing this failure demand. And this was our hypothesis. We believe that using password lists to sign into ThoughtWorks systems and services will result in a faster and more convenient and secure end user experience. We designed a test for our hypotheses. We used a credential chain combined with behavior detection, which I've already talked about a little bit. We called out for volunteers who met our requirements. In other words, they had a touch ID, they had uh, the required verification app installed on their phone, and they were willing to try it out with some caveats. It may go wrong, but we're here to support you if it does. We required people to register their own web authent token, and that could either be a physical key or a biometric. It was up to you, or both. That was fine. Um, plus, we wanted them, we had to ask them to enroll into our verification application. We ended up with initially about 120 volunteers in a range of roles and based across all regions. Um, we also directly targeted some high value accounts and by high value accounts, I mean users who have access to the most sensitive and complex data and invited them um, to join the trial. And then we sat back and we learned and we gathered some feedback. And we found a few things weren't quite as seamless as, as we expected. Um, one of the things we did discover was you still need to set an update a compliant password in our IDP, even though you never used it, because we did still have some systems that required you to have a password. We also found that some browsers didn't support web or then, and people are pretty keen on their favorite browser. Um, particularly, um, Firefox was a challenge here. Um, the use of web or then and touch ID is not supported in Firefox currently. And we had a number of people who really liked using Firefox. And we also found that there was some odd bits and pieces of command line interface technology that still required 
a password. We couldn't use passwordless with those. So that excluded a couple of people. Since then, though, we've actually solved a number of those problems. So this was much earlier this year. Um, gathering feedback. This is the kind of thing that people who are using passwordless say to me. They loved it. It is so rare that I get somebody who doesn't like it or for whom it doesn't work. People absolutely love it. I would have to wrest it from their cold, dead hands to take it away. These are some of the people that, some of the things that people say. Um, very low friction. I used to curse Octa credential challenges. Now I barely register when I have to log in again. Um, not having to go through one password every time I wanted to access something in Okta has integrated well with into my workflow. Um, uses secure authentication without security comp compromise. Doesn't rely on passwords, which may or may not be strong enough. Safe and secure, easy way to log in. I don't have to depend on other tools or machines. And the most common bit of feedback I got was people, I can't imagine going back to the old way of doing this. So I think that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. From an IT perspective, because these things matter, um, no access issues from the trial group. Really very, very few problems, apart from the ones that I highlighted earlier, have come up at all. Most people just touch and log in and carry on with their day. Um, a small number of people found new and creative ways to paint themselves into a corner. Um, for example, registering a biometric on a phone and then finding it doesn't give access on the laptop. That was an interesting one. Some of the terminology that we used, web or then cryptographic key, scared some people off. They thought, oh, this is too complicated for me. And for us, you do still need to remind people that they need to update their password when password cycle time comes around because you do still need it for some odd things, depending on what you do. From an organizational perspective, what value did this deliver to my organization? Um, no new cost implications for us. We used what we already had. So it was great, not complicated at all. No mass organizational change project required, small change in security policies. Lots more confidence, much improved confidence around securing access and really significantly reduces exposure to potential attacks on the organization. So wrapping things up, what's not to like? This was straightforward to implement. It's an excellent user experience. It's low effort, low cost, reduces failure demand and IT support costs, provides much better security, and it makes security teams and auditors happy. And that's important. What's next? Um, and again, because this was earlier in the year, um, Passwordless is now available to anybody who wants to try it. Um, we're still experimenting with making some more use of the behavior detection technology available to us um, in both directions. For example, making it even easier to log in for highly trusted users or people who are on a trusted device. Um, and some additional technology shortly to be made available via our, ID, via our IDP is likely to move us yet another step forward to the goal of zero trust where the device itself really does become the organizational perimeter and finally um we'd love to encourage you to try it um 
consider a trial of your own. We are fairly sure that you won't regret it. And that's my talk. Um, I have a couple of minutes for questions if anybody has any. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Uh, just a reminder to everybody in the Q&A, you can enter in your questions or raise your hands and we'll try and take some questions before Kelsey needs to drop. Yeah, I have about 10 minutes. My questions are quite audience today. It was either incomprehensible or completely clear. <laughs> or not what anybody expected. Oh, here we go. We have a question. Oh, there we go. Um, ah, right. Okay. This is a great question. So the question is in, in the situation where a person were to lose a hardware, hardware security key, how would the, the passwordless ecosystem handle that? Okay, so you actually can remove or change your own security key um, because we require that you have two options to authenticate. You can use your second option to authenticate and remove the security key that you've lost. Um, if you've used your laptop touch ID and you've lost that, then you've probably got bigger problems and you're probably calling IT support. Um, but generally speaking, the security key that you use to log in is your responsibility, pretty much like your password is your responsibility. But you can resolve that problem yourself. Um, so for us, we uh, the question from um, Yogesh, what are the applications for which passwordless is implemented? So we have all single sign-on um, software as a service applications that are all accessed via our identity provider. I've already given it away, that's Okta. So if you can access Okta, which is protected by passwordless, you can then access all of our applications via Okta. Um, oh, here we've got another one. Um, for the banking environment, um, I would love to see this implemented in the banking environment. One of the greatest frustrations to me is that the banking industry tends to use SMS as a form of, and passwords as a multi, as a form of multi-factor um, authentication. And generally their password requirements are really weak um, and SMS is the least secure method. So implementing something like passwordless, allowing people to use a security key or a token, would be a huge improvement in security. There's a little question that's come up in the chats. Um, is there a library for passwords? Yes, um, head over to um, WC3 and all of the, the libraries and the protocols, they're, they're available, they're um, open source. So, yeah. For existing registered customers is the question. Um, well, for us, it was all existing customers and we um, we used some of the smarts behind our um, IDP to put people into a group where this particular password policy was available to them. Um, and it was, really as, it was really as simple as that. Um, we moved them from one policy group to another policy group. Very straightforward. Well, Kelsey, thank you so much for a fascinating session. It was my pleasure and thank you everybody for your time.